Okay, so thank you for joining me today. So today we're going to be talking about EndNote Web, um, which is the free version of EndNote that we support here uh, within the library. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the slides. So here's our agenda for today. So first we're going to be talking about what is EndNote, um, and then we'll kind of get into why you might want to use EndNote. And then basically most of this is going to be a live demonstration um, of what to do when you're in EndNote. And at the end, we'll have some time for questions if there's any questions. So starting out, um, what is EndNote? EndNote is a citation management system. So that means as you're doing your research, you're going to be finding articles that have citation information, and you're going to want to keep that um, in one place. So a lot of times in the past, people would keep them in notebooks or note cards or things like that. But this is obviously a way for us to keep our citation information digitally so that we can access it. And then we can do things like generate bibliographies if we need to, um, if we're writing a paper and we need to insert in-text citations. And it also helps you to share your research with other people. So what is EndNote again? There are two versions. So today we'll be talking about the second one, but the first one is EndNote Desktop. And I think they're on to EndNote 21 now. It's a paid software that you essentially download onto your computer. And it does have some additional features that the free version doesn't have, like it has extra storage and the ability to find and locate um, full text articles and attach them to your citations right within the system. Um, unfortunately, the free version doesn't have quite as many capabilities, but it works for the basics of um, what you want. And actually, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty good for a free version of something. So we, we do uh, like the free version of this. So why should you use EndNote? Um, again, it's a great way to keep your resources organized. So you have one place where you're keeping things instead of, you know, if you're like me, I have notebooks here in my home office, I have notebooks at home, and, you know, I always forget things. So having it in one place that you can log in online and see them all is super, super helpful. Um, also, if you're working with a team, it can be a great way for you guys all to work together to put articles into a group so that everyone knows exactly what articles you're working with, can see them, can um, locate them and keep you guys um, as a group more organized. And then when it comes time to do um, your article or your paper, you can get the bibliography in whatever style you need. Um, there's lots of styles. And then you can also do those in-text citations. So, you know, generating bibliographies is so great because hand typing them out with the hanging indents and all that is such a pain. Um, so having this availability to do all that for you is really, really nice. Um, and again, it, it allows you to access your resource list from anywhere. So having it in the cloud obviously is nice because, um, you know, if, if you've forgotten something, you can just log in um, and look at what you have. So I do want to give a big caveat on EndNote. Um, and this is um, where you may want to potentially, depending on your needs, explore Zotero, which is something we're looking into. And Liz, uh, my colleague, did a presentation on Zotero. So you can look for that um, information on our YouTube channel if you're interested in learning about Zotero. Um, but EndNote does not work with cloud platforms. So Google Docs and Windows 365, if you're using cloud storage, EndNote unfortunately does not integrate. And that's the paid version and the free version. So if you're going to be using Google Docs or if you're using um, like Word in the cloud, EndNote may not be the choice for you. But um, just going through this presentation, you'll see a lot of the same features. So you can see why you may want to use um, EndNote or Zotero. Um, for people who are faculty here, who work in the College of Health Sciences and even the School of Nursing, there's still a lot of people using EndNote. So for group work, that may be what you end up wanting to do just to keep your team together. But if you wanted to explore Zotero as a group, that's something that I would encourage as well. So now we're just going to jump out into the live demonstration. So there's two different ways you can get to EndNote. Because EndNote is free, um, it's not actually a library managed resource. You can just um, go through uh, the web to get there. Or if you go to our homepage, um, you can see under the citing sources, which let's get out real quick and show you where that is. On the library homepage here, you can see if I scroll down under citing sources, there is a link for EndNote. So I'm going to click on that right now. And so this is where we come to the um, EndNote sign-in page. I have noticed that when I'm Googling EndNote, occasionally it takes me to a page that basically says you have to have EndNote 21. Um, and that shouldn't be what you need. So if you're not seeing this sign-in page, um, you might want to just jump back to our library and, and go through our link because our link will take you directly to this page where 
I've had iffy experiences going through Google. So just um, as a bit of information there to get to this screen. So when you get started, the very first step is if you don't have an account, there's this button here to register. So if you click on that, it just basically asks you to fill in this information uh, and prove you're not a robot, of course. Um, I do encourage you to use your, um, like this is auto filling in my personal email address, but um, I do encourage you to, to use your Umish uh, just because it makes it easier when you're logging in between things and not having to remember what your personal account was. So once you're signed in then, you will have an account. Let me go back here and I will sign in. Let's try it in my, in my Chrome because I prefer that. So it did load eventually. So it should load much quicker than that. But basically what it will do is it'll take you to um, your dashboard. And this is your dashboard. And um, you won't see anything in the middle, obviously, because you don't have anything if you're first starting in a note. But on the side here, this is where we can see all of our references. And so we can see I have a total of 4,470 references. Um, let's take a look here and we can see that I have many groups. And what this is, is basically once you bring your citations in to EndNote, you can group them, you know, based on your project or who you're working with. And so that's one of the ways that you can keep yourself organized. So here it shows all of the different groups that I have. And then next to it, you'll see a little number. And that means the number of citations that are within that group. And then I'll show this a little bit later, but the little icons here that show people, that means, and you can see by the pop-up, this group is being shared with other EndNote users. So that can be a really great way to know to which, which folders you're sharing and which ones are just for your own reference. And finally at the bottom, if other people have shared groups with you, they will show up at this bottom. So groups shared by others, you will see um, items underneath here. So that's kind of an overview of the right-hand side here. And then in the middle, it just basically shows, you know, the citations that we have. So if I go to a group, let's go to a small group. There's one that has seven articles. You can see here, these are the articles um, that we have in this group and um, just, just those articles. So that's how you can view, you know, specifically what's in that group. Jumping up to the top here, there's some options that um, you're gonna not use many of them, but I'm gonna kind of highlight the ones you will use. So my references obviously takes you to your dashboard so you can see everything you have. Collect, there's several options. Online search allows you to search within Clarivit databases. I don't really recommend going that way because it's just sort of limits you in a way you don't really need to be limited. I think it's easy enough to export out of the databases themselves that kind of going into the databases specifically um, is a little bit easier. That way, you know, you're not just limited to Clarabit. New references for if you have, let's say, a book in your hand that you don't have a digital citation for, you can click on new reference and just hand type in the citation information in order to put it in with, um, with your items. And then import references is really where you're going to be doing the most of, um, of your activities with this. So pull this out here real quick. So we can have um, some room for tabs. So I'm going to demonstrate now how you're going to bring something in. Um, so I'm going to go to our library homepage again. And I'm going to be showing you today two different databases, and they're both going to be um, medical in this, in this uh, situation. But um, there's really only two formats, uh, file formats, that you're going to use when you're doing citation exporting and importing into EndNote through our systems. There's um, the PubMed format and what's called an RIS format. So first we're going to look at PubMed. And so I'm just going to do a quick search for brain injury. So there's two different ways you can go about doing this from here. If you'd like to just export one article because you know one specific article that you want, um, if you're in that article, you can click right here to send to, and then you can click on citation manager, and then we'll create a file, but I'm going to jump back here to show you how to do multiples because you can create a file with just one item. But if you're interested in multiple articles, what you can do is just click the boxes next to them. So we'll do four here. Once you've selected the items, PubMed lets you know you have four items selected. And then you can send them to Citation Manager. If you're gonna be doing multiple pages within PubMed though, once you go to that second page, 
the boxes will be unclicked. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of searching, you'll wanna send these to your clipboard first. So this is a little distinction here. So um, we'll just show you how to send it to the clipboard. Once you have something in your clipboard, a little link will come up here and you can see those articles. So any of those articles um, from the clipboard you can click send to, or if you just were on this page and you had, you know, go back and click those four again. Um, send to. So basically while you're in PubMed, you're gonna be wanting to look for that send to button. So now we're gonna send these to our citation manager. And it's gonna ask you if you want that selection, if you want all the results on this page or all the results total. So if I wanted, you know, like let's say I was doing um, a systematic review and I had 1,200 articles, um, I could have them all sent out. There is a limit. I can't remember how many um, off the top of my head right now, but for most purposes, you can just, you know, take your selection and then create a uh, file. And so what that does is it brings up here into my download, you can see this PubMed dash brain injure dash set dot NBIB. And NBIB is the extension for PubMed articles. So what we're going to do then is go to EndNote. And we don't do anything with this file once it's downloaded. It's not really meant to, Chrome can't read it if you click it, but an EndNote, EndNote will know what to do with it. So we're going to come into EndNote. We're going to click on collect and import references. And this is one of those things that the more you do it, it just be, will become so automatic. There's a lot of little steps, but it becomes pretty automatic for you. So we're going to choose that file from our downloads. So then we can see that. And then for import options, this is where that file format is important because EndNote is asking you what file format we have. And so I have mine set up to only show um, EndNote import PubMed and RefMan RIS. Those, like I said, uh, PubMed and RefMan are the only two that I generally use. And you can make, um, yours may have more options. And if you wanna make it more stripped down, there's the select favorites option where you can decide um, so let's say I wanted to get rid of EndNote import. I can remove that from my favorites. And let's say I wanted to add in, um, let's just pick something here, AP source. Let's say I wanted to add that. I can copy that to my favorites. So by doing that, you can kind of, you know, get your list to a manageable uh, size. I'm just going to leave it with those two. But now that I have my file, I know it's going to be PubMed because of that NDID. And you'll see the difference in a little bit when we do the RIS. But that those two match, even though they don't really match. And then this is where we're gonna put it into a group. So we can either um, just put it into unfiled, which basically will just dump it into EndNote unorganized, or we can click on this new group. And I always encourage you to set up a group right away, just so you start you know, being organized right off the bat. So click new group. And then once you click import, it's gonna ask you first what you want to name that new group. I'm just going to call it EndNote Webinar. And then it's going to think for a second. And depending on how many articles you have, you know, if you have hundreds, it'll take a little bit longer. But then you can see four references were imported, imported into EndNote Webinar. So if I click that title there or go back to my references, we can see um, that group. So here we see the four articles that are in EndNote. Um, so that's how we do it from PubMed. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it from CINAHL, which is very similar. So I'm gonna scroll down to the frequent use databases again and go to CINAHL. And like I said, CINAHL um, uses RIS, but let's say you're using ERIC or you're using PsycInfo or pretty much any other major database, Web of Science, they all use that RIS format that we'll see. So I'm gonna do brain injury again. And it's similar, you know, you're going to get your results. Um, unlike PubMed, there's no um, click box over here. In CINAHL, you have to add it. And there's this little folder at the top here. And you can see right now the folder is closed. As you add things, that little folder, it'll show you on the side what's in it. And it'll indicate that there's something in there. So we can just do that. Add three this time around. So when you're done finding articles and putting them into this folder up at the top, you can then click on that. 
And then, you know, it gives you your options here, or it gives you your article titles here. And on the side, then you see these options on the right hand side, we are going to want to click export. And then it gives us some options. The default is where we want to keep it, um, direct export in RIS format. And so we can see EndNote, you know, that shows us that this is for EndNote. And you can see there's this direct export to EndNote web option. You can use that. Um, that does work in CINAHL, but I like to show the RIS format just because not every database has that option to do a direct export to EndNote web. So getting in the habit of just using RIS files means that you can do it the same way every time, which for me, I like. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And once again, we're going to see this took it to a folder that's called delivery.ris. So that's where you're going to see that file extension .ris, which is the, uh, I think it stands for reference information systems. Um, but if we go back to EndNote again, now that we've got that file, we're going to hit collect again, import references. We're going to choose that new file for my downloads. So delivery.ris, and here you can see 200 type RIS file, NBIB file. So those are the file formats and we're gonna do RIS. And then I'm gonna pick that refman RIS format this time around. And then I'm going to put that into my, oops, too far. EndNote webinar folder that we created a moment ago. Click import. And now we'll see those three references. So that's essentially how you're going to go about doing this with any database, um, as long as it exports out into an RIS or NBIB format. If it doesn't, feel free to contact me. I honestly never encounter that. Basically, virtually every database, except for PubMed, because PubMed has to be different, um, uses the RIS format. So now we can see everything in here. And one of the things I want to kind of point out, too, is... Um, the information that comes in from the database will include different fields, and that's kind of something we can't control, unfortunately. So the CINAHL ones, it's got this great option here where we can just click on this EBSCOhost go to record, and it will take us directly back to CINAHL where we can find that article in order to you know, access the PDF. So if we go back here, you'll see the PubMed ones do not include a URL. It's just something PubMed does not export out. So two of the things you can do for that is if you want to grab the URL, if you click on the title of these, you can you can paste it in there. Um, there's a field down here that you can paste the URL into so that you have that information. Or you can download um, the actual article itself and attach the full text to this citation if you'd like to do that. Um, with the free version, if you're sharing files, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, the people you share it with won't see that, unfortunately. That's a feature of the paid version. But just for your own um, convenience, that way you don't have to go back and look it up in PubMed again. Uh, it's one thing that I really wish PubMed would, would do is add that URL, but so far they haven't. So this is how basically um, you're going to get your items together. And then um, if you want to do a, you know, a group share where you're going to have other people you want to work with, if we go back up to the top here, um, the next option over is this organize. And this right underneath here, manage my groups, this is how you are going to go into um, start sharing, like that little icon indicates. So. We'll see down here my EndNote webinar right now. It doesn't have any share information because I'm not currently sharing it. So when I go to organize, manage my groups, this is going to show me all of my um, all of my groups that I currently have, and then I can decide if I want to share it. I can click on manage sharing, and it's basically telling me I don't have any email addresses because I'm not sharing that yet. If I had already shared it, it would show the email addresses of, you know, of the people I'm sharing it with. But I'm going to start sharing this and I'm going to share this with my colleague, Liz. So I'm going to type in her name. And then I have two options. Uh, actually, let me talk about this first. If you have a ton of emails that you're sharing, let's say you're working with a group of 20 people and you don't want to enter them all in manually, um, you can upload a CSV file with all of those um, email addresses. So that's another option for you, or you can just manually type them in um, each one on a separate line. But when I go to share it with Liz, I have two options. I can select read only or read and write. 
So read only, um, basically Liz can see what I've done, but she won't be able to do anything um, with the file. She's only be able to read it. So that's an option we usually recommend, like um, if students just need to show their instructor an article and you know the instructor won't be doing anything with it, you can just do read only. Otherwise, if you're gonna be collaborating, you're gonna wanna pick read and write. That way Liz can go into my folder, she can add things, she can edit the, um, the items that are in there and she'll have you know full access as as a um as a teammate so i'll click apply now it says one email was added if i close out of here and i go back to my references you can see now that i am sharing that and that's what that little um item indicates that i'm sharing it and then and, if you ever need to uh, go ahead buzz Sorry. And I actually just logged into my EndNote account and I do have it in my groups shared by others area. Yep. So right at the bottom, that's exactly as once you share it, you don't even have to accept it. It should just, so that's, that's been something that people get confused about too. They're like, oh, I haven't gotten an email. If someone says they've shared it with you, basically you just need to log into EndNote and check to see if it's displaying. And that's how you're going to get the notification that it's there is it's just going to show up if it's been shared. So um, under manage my groups, if you decide that you want to stop sharing, um, you know, I can unclick a button here. Um, you can also uh, rename the file. If you need, let's say you named it something silly at the beginning and you want to rename it, you can do that. And then you can also delete it out. So this is how you manage basically all those files, sharing, renaming, and deleting. Um, but uh, underneath others groups here, this is going to show you all the groups that have been shared with you. And let's say that you decide that you don't, you know, I this, let's say that this article right here at the very top is something that I am not um, using anymore. I can take these off so that they don't show up on mine anymore. And that group shared with other, you know, by others won't be huge. You can just select the ones you're currently working with people on um, by clicking under the, that show. Uh, find duplicates. That's great when you're doing um, something like a review where you've got multiple, you know, lots and lots of articles and potentially multiples. Um, and the manage my attachments is just how you can manage any of the articles that you've, um, you know, actually linked within here. Um, I don't use those options as much, but um, it's good to know that they're there. And then um, jumping on to the bibliographies, which is the next kind of um, thing down the line on, on this option here. Um, there is an option just to generate a bibliography, but I do want to spend a minute talking about this site while you write plugin. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it today, but essentially what it is, is it's a plugin for, again, you have to use Word, the desktop version of Word. But if you're using Word, it's a plugin that shows up in your Word that connects you to your EndNote library. So anything that's in your EndNote, any of those groups, any of those articles, you can basically tell Word to insert an in-text citation, you know, at a certain point, and you can edit it to either, you know, if you need the full in-text citation, or if you just need, you know, the date and the, not the author name, you can kind of let it know all that. But it will, um, it will do those in-text citations automatically while you're writing your paper in Word. Um, but if you just want to do a bibliography, you can click on that. And then I'm going to pick, let's see, let's pick something. Actually, let's just do our EndNote webinar. EndNote webinar, we had seven articles in there, right? So um this is another one of those drop downs where you can decide. So I have as my default APA and JAMA, which is the American Medical Association format. Um, those are the two that I use the most often. But if you are, let's say you are an, um, and you, unfortunately you kind of have to scroll down. If you're like MLA, actually let's do Chicago since it's, okay. So if we wanted to do Chicago, um, we can pick, our Chicago style that we want. And I'm just gonna grab that copy to favorites, same kind of thing where, oh, and there it is. But if uh, we wanna take something away, we can remove it from favorites. So that's how you can manage your bibliographics. Because I can't remember what it, it'll give you a default list, but as you can see, there's many, many, many other default styles for you know specific journals or things like that. So I'm gonna do it today in APA. And I'm going to select a file format. And what I'm going to want is um, a rich text file, which is going to give me basically a Word document. And then I'm going to click Save. And then again, that's going to kind of come up here to my downloads. And then I should be able to look at this, open it. And then here it gives me my 
bibliography. So as always, you're going to want to, you know, make sure that it's formatted it properly. I do, I've had really good luck with EndNote um, for the most part doing things the proper way. Um, but you do always want to check to make sure periods, punctuation, um, italics, all that stuff is, um, you know, properly formatted. But this gives you, you know, your start. And if you are working with Cite While You Write, where you are doing the in-text citations while you write your paper, it will uh, dynamically create that bibliography. So as soon as you add your first in-text citation, it's going to start at the bottom of your paper uh, generating a bibliography. So this step within EndNote is only if you just need the bibliography, or if you want your students, um, if you're a professor who wants your students to give you a bibliography, that's how they can generate it. Um, I'm going to X out of here. And then basically the only other thing is, um, you know, if you want to get into your, uh, you know, your profile and do some changes to there, you can do that. But other than that, that is a whirlwind uh, tour of EndNote. Go back to my presentation here real quick. I think that would be the end of the presentation. Let me just make sure. Yep. So now we are on to questions. I'm just gonna leave this up for a second so you can see if you need to email me. Uh, feel free to email me with any questions, or if you want to make an appointment, this is something I do all the time. People make appointments with me just to kind of go through and learn and note. So this is a very quick presentation. So feel free to make an appointment and we can sit down and work with um, specifics or again, to work with maybe that site while you write, if you're interested in it. Thank you for watching this recorded webinar. Find upcoming webinars to register for at libcal.umflint.edu.